morning. There's a little extra energy in the house today. I don't know why. I think it's the people in the back bringing a little extra energy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, uh, we had fall camp. For those who don't know, we had fall camp for our, our student ministries this past, uh, this past weekend. So two nights, right, at Camp Geneva? Yeah? You had a good time and a tiring time is what I'm Reading from the faces, yeah? <laughs> Welcome everyone to Evergreen. It's good to have you today. We have a special guest preacher with us today. I'll, I'll introduce him later in the service. Uh, we're going to continue our series on David. We also have a special announcement, again, in the middle of the service. So don't go to the restroom when you normally do in the middle of the service. <laughs> or you're going to miss a few things. Uh, we just want to uh, remember that it's Christ who, who welcomes us here, Christ who accepts us as we are, Christ who knows our brokenness and, and welcomes it and receives it today. May God's grace and peace be with you all this morning. Let's stand and greet one another uh, with God's peace. All right. Good morning. Good to see you all today. Again, it's awesome to see all the students up front here. I'm loving the energy. Goodness. Um, oh, what a good weekend it was. I was able to come out last night and worship with them out in Camp Geneva, and it was kind of a special service. Would you guys agree? It was kind of a special service. I um, thought Pastor Jesse and Chris um, did a great job. But I want to read to us from the book of Isaiah here. In chapter 61, this is one of the major prophets of the Old Testament. And um, <clears throat> he's speaking here, but also prophesying about the Son of God, Jesus Christ, um, and what he's doing for us and what he did for all of you. Um, right? So this is Isaiah 61. It says this, The Spirit of the Lord, is, of the Sovereign Lord, is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and to the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. It continues to say, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So that's what we're going to sing about here. And if God has freed you from something, if, if you can relate to this, Jesus specializes 
and mending broken things. Amen. We are a church about recovery. And so we know that um, we're very familiar with that. But if he's done that to you uh, sometime in your life, um, we want you to sing out loud and clear with the heart of gratitude to God this morning. Amen. Let's sing this song, Graves into Gardens. Here we go. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures the faith are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in love. Sing it if you know it. Oh, there's nothing. Highways, you're 
Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We thank you that you are a God who loves, that you are a God who reaches out. You are a proactive God. You men broken things. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, God. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. This 
sing together. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great. Give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. We respond in worship this morning. Join with all creation, we sing together, all the earth. And all the earth will shout your praise. Oh, we love to hear it. We sing in all the earth. We'll shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. God, it's our honor, it's our privilege to declare that you are great, that there is no one who is like you, and no one holds a candle to you. You've done so much for us. You've done so much. So we respond this morning with gratitude, with praise, with 
hands lifted high, with lungs shouting that you are great. We serve a great God. So we worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen, amen. You may be seated. Good morning, campers. All right, even if you weren't at camp this weekend, good morning. My name is Chris Bredevog. I'm so glad to be with you this morning. I'm glad to be rocking the awesome camp shirts. We had an amazing experience with our third through 12th students over this weekend, and we are excited for more opportunities to connect both with each other as an evergreen community and in our larger Hudsonville community as we go into the next couple weeks. Starting today, we have the opportunity to partner with Love Your Neighbor. They are getting ready for Christmas. I know we haven't even had Thanksgiving yet, but in order to pull this all together, we need to start now. So you are invited to get involved by purchasing a gift or stocking stuffers or volunteering at their community Christmas party. We have a little Christmas tree in the courtyard. You can stop by there for more information or to scan the QR code to be taken to the link to sign up to help. We just invite everybody to get involved with that ministry partner. It'll be a great time and we love to be able to get ready for Christmas in that way. We also have the ability to care for not just our local community, our international community as well. This coming Wednesday, we are going to be packing meals for Kids Coalition Against Hunger. We've done this annually. It is a great experience for all ages, and we are going to get ready for that today by clearing the chairs. So if you have a few minutes after the service to help stack the chairs, move them to the side. We are gonna fill this auditorium with enough supplies to make 25,000 meals. So I think that is awesome. If you have not signed up and still wanna get involved, I'm sure we can put you to work and we are looking forward to a great opportunity serving our community together. If you're not too tired out, we do have the opportunity the next day, Encore is getting together to learn more about the Holy Land. Our Encore group technically is for 50 or older, but if you ask really nicely, you might be able to join them for this uh, educational experience. I'm, they're nice people, I think they'll let you in. We also, I know, we gotta keep going. We have the chance on the 19th, next Sunday, to have a short congregational meeting. Our leadership depends on volunteers and people willing to serve on council. And so this congregational meeting will to be, be to vote for those new members and uh, just keep that process going. It will be short, all members are invited to stay afterwards and be involved in that. Last but not least, we actually get to Thanksgiving. We did Christmas, now it's Thanksgiving. On the 22nd, that Wednesday, we normally have community night. Instead, we are going to have community night dinner and a family interactive Thanksgiving worship experience. So instead of coming here on Thursday morning, you can sleep in, maybe get your turkey in the oven, do whatever you enjoy doing for Thanksgiving, but that Wednesday evening, we're going to gather and give thanks together. This is going to be set up for kids, parents, teenagers, everybody. It will be uh, a neat time together, and we just invite you to join us for that. We are going to have a soup bar, so nothing fancy. Save room for your Thanksgiving turkey. But if you would like to bring a crock pot of soup, you can sign up in the courtyard, too, and just make this a fun time together. So we have uh, a big priority on our community partners and our Four Corners offering is a chance to share our resources with those agencies that are doing amazing work. This series, our Four Corners offering is Mosaic Counseling and this is an agency that is providing counseling services to anyone who needs it and dealing with the possible financial barriers that might be in the way of that. So we are excited to partner with them to provide those resources both uh, near and far and I just invite you here as we give our offering to consider bringing a dollar to one of the boxes in the corners. The rest of our offering is 
something our members and attenders give faithfully to that keeps our lights on, that allows us to do stuff like fall camp and all the other ministries that go on. If you would like to contribute to that, we have boxes in the back out by the doors and we are just so grateful for the way you as a community continues to uh, just share gener generously with what you have. We are going to dismiss our kids four through second grade. We're going to meet out in the courtyard, guys, and continue with our worship together. So just a couple announcements before we begin, or before we continue worship with hearing God's word. Uh, recovery director, I am very excited to announce that we have a new recovery director, and her name is Carrie Dunham, and she was previously standing right here for the last uh, set of music. Carrie is, um, yeah, come on. <laughs> Carrie previously served in a recovery home for nine years in Holland. She's been a full-time stay-at-home mom for the last few years. She has a degree in psychology. Yeah, stay-at-home moms. Okay, we got one. Yeah. <laughs> she has a commitment to the 12 steps as the path to recovery, and uh, she has a passion for integrating recovery into the life of the whole church. She's also been attending here a year or so, so we're uh, very excited to, to welcome Carrie. She'll begin in a couple weeks as our next recovery director. All right. Uh, really grateful for the search team for that uh, position, put in a lot of uh, hours and looked through a lot of applications, a lot of interviews, and so grateful for them as well. And then now I'd like to uh, like us to begin thinking about uh, the time in, in Scripture as we hear God's Word. We're going to hear the Scripture from uh, a guy named Daryl L. Delaney, the Reverend Daryl L. Delaney, also known as my friend. <laughs> Daryl and my wife Stephanie and I went to seminary together about a decade ago. I respect him greatly, consider him a man after God's own heart, as David is called. Daryl, just so you know, he previously served as a youth pastor, a campus pastor, a pastor of spiritual formation. He worked at GVSU, campus ministry, and currently he's the lead chaplain in Kalamazoo County for forgot, uh, Reach the Forgotten Jail Ministry. We've had them for our Four Corners offering before as well, so we know a little bit about that, that ministry. So he's the, the lead chaplain there. He's a writer, he's a speaker, he's a creator, a consultant, a coach. He's a husband of almost 20 years. He almost made it to 20. Well done father to three children. In his free time, he makes beats, reads on beaches, and plays chess. I play chess too, so we're going to play next time, and I'm going to dominate. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> 
Daryl uh, aspires to be a Barnabas carried along by God's grace. So please welcome Daryl as he brings God's word to us this morning. Thank you, brother. God's peace. Amen. Good morning. I'm excited to be here today. Thank you, Brandon, for the love there. I don't, you know, I got the mic now, so, <laughs> you know, you getting on trying to talk about you dominating on chess, so we'll have to see about that, my friend. We'll have to see about that. So before I met Stephanie and Brandon, I met Jason from Mulan. Where did he go? Um, we went to Kuiper College together way back in the day when it was Reformed Bible College. So I met Jason from Mulan before he went to RTS in Florida. And now uh, he's here, and I got to see the Smiths, too. So it's really great to be here. Thank you for allowing me to come. I realize the pulpit is a very important place and not to be taken lightly. So my prayer is that I rightly divide this word here today and that you will be encouraged by what you hear. <clears throat> my understanding is that you're in a series on the rise of David. So we're going to pick up in that series, um, starting with 1 Samuel chapter 23. Um, verses 7 to 14. All right, so let me give you a little bit of disclaimer before I get started. I'm a mobile preacher. You see, I'm already moving. All right. So it's an interactive sermon. So don't be afraid to say amen when you're invited to say. Amen. If you're invited to say praise the Lord, you're invited to say. Praise the Lord. If I say, say hallelujah, you're welcome to say. Hallelujah. Now, if I say prove it, you say. Amen. Repeat it, prove it. There you go. Say it again. Prove it. Amen. Now, when you hear me say that, it might come up randomly in the sermon, okay? So if I ask you to say prove it, what's going to happen after that is you're going to get a Bible verse that backs up what I am telling you because I do not want you to take my word for it. I want you to take God's word for it so that when I leave and you forget about me, you still have the scripture to refer back to. Say amen. amen. All right, y'all catching on already, feeling that energy. And if you don't do those things, I'll preach for 99 minutes. <laughs> I know some of y'all got a crock pot at home. Oh, yeah, you caught on. Yeah. <laughs> now you caught on. I love it. So, so the, now we're getting to know each other. All right, cool. All right. So we're going to read God's word from 1 Samuel chapter 23, verses 7 to 14. Hear the word of the Lord. Saul was told that David had gone to Kyla, and he said, God has delivered him into my hands, for David has imprisoned himself by entering a town with gates and bars. And Saul called up all his forces for battle to go down to Kyla to besiege David and his men. When David learned that Saul was plotting against him, he said to Abathar the priest, bring me the ephod, which is how they consult of the Lord. David said, Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard definitely that Saul's plans to come to Kyla to destroy the town on account of me. Will the citizens of Kyla surrender me to him? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? Lord God of Israel, tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will. And David again asked, will the citizens of Kyla surrender me and my men to Saul? And the Lord said, they will. So David and his men, about 600 in number, left Kyla and kept moving from place to place. Everybody say place to place. place, to place. When Saul was told that David had escaped from Kyla, he did not go there. David stayed in the wilderness strongholds in the hills of the desert of Ziph. Day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. This is the word of the Lord. Please respond by saying, thanks be to God. Amen. I want to speak to you from the title and the subject today, Born to Run. Everybody say, Born to Run. Born to run. All right, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for who you are, what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for the point you bring us in our walk with you. And we acknowledge the fact that you are in complete control of every situation. You're not in heaven, twiddling your thumbs, wondering what's going to happen next, but you know exactly what you're doing. You had a date on the calendar for this very moment. You're the author and the finisher of our faith and also the sustainer of it. And you're faithful to complete the work you started in us. God, I wrote some things down, but if your spirit doesn't infuse them with power and purpose, they will be meaningless. 
So, Lord God, take these words that I've written that you have given me and allow me to preach them faithfully according to how you want them to be said and done. Let everything said and done be pleasing to you. And, Lord God, I pray that you would plant a seed and water a seed. But if anything good happens, we'll give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock, my strength, and my redeemer. These and all other blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. So, some of y'all are too young to remember this. Born to Run is a, is a song. A song by Bruce Springsteen. Everybody knows him as the boss. So, a lot of people don't know this. Well, you can Google a lot of this stuff now, little people. Um, so... Bruce Springsteen had two albums before this with the E Street Band, and they weren't doing too hot, and the record label was thinking about dropping him. So in 1975, he pens this song called Born to Run. It took him six months to write it, and uh, he struggled trying to encompass what he felt as a young person. He's in his 20s, and he feels like, I want to chase this American dream, and I want to run after it, but I'm kind of stuck. I long to run, I want to run, I want to do things, but I'm kind of stuck. And uh, I thought Born to Run would be a really cool title for this because David is actually running right now. So David is actually uh, running from King Saul. So King Saul is kind of a crazy dude. Say crazy. crazy. He's kind of a crazy guy. So in, in 1 Samuel 16, Samuel anoints David. After he was overlooked, by the way, <laughs> he was, there were eight sons that came, and, and David was supposed to be, God, God told Samuel, I'm going to anoint the next king in this house, Jesse's house. They didn't even bring the man to the, to the selection committee. He didn't make the draft, so to speak. So, so they, David is anointed king. He's, a, he's the next one. God looks at the heart, not the outer appearance, but the heart. So then after that, there's David and Goliath. That happens in 1 Samuel 17. So, so David, of course, you heard this. You heard this uh, preached a couple of weeks ago where he takes on the uncircumcised Philistine because the Philistine Goliath is disrespecting the armies of God. So he takes him on, cuts his head off. And then everybody starts singing this song. This song hits the top of the charts. It's like number one on the billboard, and, and it's going viral, Okay. This song that everybody keeps singing, it goes like this. Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his tens of thousands. Now the ladies are dancing. They got all their sequins on. It's like a Taylor Swift party. Everybody is there. They shaking it off. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody hears about this song. And so Saul hears this song, and he says, oh, man, everybody's singing this song that that Saul has slain his thousands and David has slain his tens of thousands. And what if he tries to take the kingdom from me? So when the spirit comes on to David, the spirit leaves Saul. So in the Old Testament, the spirit used to come on you when you were obedient and then leave you when you were disobedient. I'm so glad he's not doing that nowadays. <laughs> the Holy Spirit now lives in us and dwells in us. So we don't have to worry about that even when we're being naughty. Say amen. All right, cool. We thank you for God's grace in that. But back in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, it was like, hey, Saul has disobeyed God. And the spirit, it left him in this bad spirit, bad spirit, started bothering him. So now he's tormented by this bad spirit, and he asked David to come in and play some songs for him. He doesn't play that song, but he does play some music, right? And so imagine if you're playing a song and somebody's throwing spears at you, trying to, trying to nail you to the wall. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That would actually be a lot of pressure for me. Um, I don't know about you guys. Maybe you're all cool with that. But uh, for me, I would have been a little nervous. Now, in this situation, after this, the relationship has gone bad between David and Saul, even though Saul has him in the army, he starts to have to run for his life because Saul wants to kill him. I thought we were friends, but I guess we're not. Okay. That's a little odd. Now, so he's running for his life. And that's where we find him in this chapter. He's been to different cities. And now he's leaving Kyla and he's going into the wilderness, the desert of Ziph. Everybody say Ziph. Ziph. 
Now, the first thing you need to know is that we all run from something. We all run from something. There's this movie I like called Minority Report. I wouldn't recommend it for kids, but it's a nice movie for action and all that stuff. It's a movie about a cop who arrests people who does crimes before they do the crime so that there's no murder or no crime happening. Now, one time he finds that he is the actual culprit of murder, so he has to flee. So he, he's the chief of police, but all of a sudden his name comes up as one who is going to have a crime happen, a murder happen. So they, the ones that he trained up are standing around him to arrest him, and they say, please don't, don't run. Don't make this harder than it is. And he says a line that is so crazy. He says, everybody runs. Everybody runs. Then he takes off running. I mean, if you know a Tom Cruise movie, you know he's going to run in every single movie he in. I don't know why he needs to prove that he is fit, but he <laughs> runs. So, when we run, everybody say run. run. Sometimes we run for good reasons. We run to get in shape. We run to stay fit. We run to discipline our bodies. We run to train for a race. Or we just clear our minds when we're running. It's a good thing. God gave us ability to run. Whoever can move, that's great. But sometimes we run for bad reasons. Sometimes we run to get away from things that we should face. Sometimes we run when we hide. Sometimes we run when we have insecurity or fear or pain or there's a responsibility that we don't want no parts of. Sometimes we run because we're avoiding something. It's a difficult situation or a crucial conversation you know you have to have. And we much rather run from that. I, I, I'm not going to bust y'all out. I'm not going to embarrass y'all, but I do run from things sometimes. Sometimes I let the phone ring. I don't want to talk right now. Ooh. A family member, a loved one. I don't want to talk right now. Um, I, I have been guilty of ghosting people. If you have ghosted, ghosting means that you're not there. Okay. If someone calls or tries to get you to respond on the message and you don't respond, you're ghosting them means you're not there. No ghosts are not there. Get it? Say amen. amen. Sometimes we are unwilling to face the truth. Sometimes the, the danger that we perceive when we run is real. And sometimes it is perceived. And perception is reality for some folks. So you may believe that somebody doesn't like you and that they want to fight you, you might believe that they're talking about you behind your back. And that will make you respond a certain way. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but I've been known to walk around the person that I thought had a problem with me. I've been known to not address the thing that might rock the boat. I've been known to sidestep them and keep on scrolling. I've been known to do that, and I'm not proud of it, but that is sometimes some of the ways that we have run from things. Say amen. amen. Now, David is running for his physical life. Saul has made it known that he wants to kill David because he is threatened. He feels like, oh, this guy's going to take my throne. So in his feelings, Saul, he turns into fight mode. Everybody say Fight. Now, David, he turns into flight mode. Everybody say flight. So David's fleeing. He's running. Now, David is running away from someone, but he's also running to someone. Say who? Oh, it's God. Wait, you didn't see that in the scripture, huh? Say prove it. He shows Psalm 63 right there. This psalm, he wrote this psalm. And in the heading of that psalm, it says that when he was on the run from King Saul. So while he's running, it's interesting because he is afraid for his life. He's like, what have I done? Sometimes people will be angry with you and you didn't do anything. Sometimes it's not your problem, but people will make it your problem. Say amen. amen. Yeah, it's not my problem. But for some reason, you're trying to make this my problem. And what happens when David is on the run? This is while he is running. This is while he's in the hot, sweaty desert, cold at night, like 30 degrees almost. 
And at 110 in the daytime, he's running from Saul, but he has this prayer that he writes. It says, you are my God, you God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you, earnestly I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. Remember, he's in the desert. Zith is hot. He says, I've seen you in the sanctuary and behold your power and glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will fully be satisfied as with the riches of foods. I will sing with, with singing lips. My mouth will praise you. Everybody say praise. On my bed, I will remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Check this out. This part right here. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. Ooh. But... The king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him while the mouths of liars will be silenced. So I love the Psalms because it gives us permission to have a full range of emotions on how we feel. Now, people actually turned this into a worship song and sang it. Can you imagine singing that in worship? That, that those who plan on be killing me will be destroyed. Hallelujah. They're going to be food for jackals, thanks to be to God, right? Interesting that some, a lot of these songs ended up as worship songs. But I love the fact that he doesn't ignore how he is feeling. He runs to God with the problems. He feels this fear. He feels that this guy is coming to destroy him, and he takes it right to God. Y'all got to pay attention to this. When you have a situation that you feel like you want to run from, you can run from it, but make sure you run to God with it. Because he's a big God and he can handle it. He's actually standing there like this. Could you give me that? Could you come to me? Could you come here, please? I'm here to help you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to help you through that. You don't need to figure it out on your own. You don't need to isolate yourself. You don't need to hide what you're feeling. If you have a problem, you can take it to the Lord. Say, prove it. A little bit louder in the back. There it is. Okay, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast your cares on me, Jesus, because why? I care for you. You can cast your care. Let me tell you what the cast is. It's like a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. Cast it. Everything that makes you afraid, everything that makes you want to run, everything that makes you insecure, you can throw it to him. And God understands everything we've been through. Say, prove it. Prove it. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says, Jesus has been tempted at every point that we have. He's familiar with all the feels, all the experiences, and yet he has been through that without sin, and that's why we can go to the throne of grace, because he understands. He's been wounded, so we can bring our wounds to him. Say amen. amen. He is the one that can help us, and God has ordained people to walk alongside us. We have friends. We have neighbors, we have pastors, we have counselors, we have therapists. Let me tell you something, I've been in therapy since, since uh, pandemic, and I don't know if I'd have made it without it. Let's just be honest. We need somebody. If we got to pay somebody to listen to us, get that stuff out, then we should pay them. Come on, y'all. Listen. We need all the help we can get. Maybe you have a chemical imbalance that a psychiatrist can prescribe you something that helps you balance your chemicals in your brain. God has ordained the physician. Did you know Luke was a physician? You know the gospel of Luke? He was a physician. He was a doctor, okay? So he made house calls, all right? So what I'm saying to you is God has ordained therapists and practitioners and people in the medical health care field and then people who are just mentors, People who are sponsors. This is a recovery church, right? 
right? Okay, so do we believe in sponsors? I, I want y'all to know that everybody is, a, is struggling with step one. We all have a problem. We all have a something. Our lives become unmanageable, and it's called sin. And we need a higher power named Jesus to restore us back to sanity. We all need that. And when you have your fears and when you have your insecurities and when you have your things that you want to run from, guess what? Jesus is saying, come on, bring it here. I'm willing for you to bring it to me. And when we do that, we actually get an exchange that happens. So if I, let's say I was going to hand you something and then you handed me something else in exchange. So let's say you sell popsicles. I like popsicles. So I'm going to give you money, and you're going to give me popsicles. That, that sounds like a good exchange. Okay, cool. Now, let's say you're Jesus, and I have fear, and I run to you, and I want to give you my fear. Jesus says, can you give me that? And then what Jesus gives me is his courage. He exchanges for me, me with me peace. Everybody say peace. So, not only do we all run, but number two, we actually run away from things. But we need to actually realize we have run to God instead of just away from things. But the third thing is that God wants us to run for and with him. Say, prove it. Prove it. Show Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, take a look around. Take a look around. There's a cloud of witnesses here. A witness is a person who sees something and says something. How many of you have seen God do something in your life? Then you're a witness if you tell somebody what you saw. If I was standing at the corner, there was a car accident, and they asked me what happened, I'm going to tell them to what I witnessed. God has done things in my life. He's exchanged beauty for ashes. He's exchanged strength for fear. He's exchanged gladness for mourning, peace for despair. He's done it over and over and over. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for you because he is not a respecter of persons. He shows no favoritism. And so now we understand that since Jesus has given us this, this race to run, this, this, this has the idea of a coliseum and the Olympics. It's kind of like the thousands of people that are in the Coliseum and people on the track doing uh, relay races. And Jesus has run the first leg and won it. But it's still a relay race. So now he has passed the baton to us. It says, look, we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let's throw off everything that hinders and the sin is so easily entangles and let us do what? Run. Let us do what? Run. Oh, yes. Run with perseverance. The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on who? Jesus. The pioneer and perfecter of our faith. He is the one that has run before us. And because he's run before us, we know we've already won the race. He is the one who won it. So now all we need to do is finish. Have you ever seen people who did a marathon? Or, you know, you know, you did 26.2 or you did the 13.1. They don't care what place they come in. You ever see them? They're just like, oh, I'm just so glad I made it. They're super exhausted. They're like, listen, I, listen, I did it. I did all this training, and I'm just so glad that I made it. They don't care what place they're in. They just want to finish. And Jesus is saying, please don't get caught up in what place you're in. I've already won the race for you. All you need to do is finish well. Everybody say finish, finish. Well. well. So we have that. And, and the race is, is, is actually us living out our faith. It's us not faking like everything is great. It's us running from something running to someone and telling everybody else who we ran to. That's how simple it is. We run from our sins. We run from the things that we're afraid of. We run to a Jesus who understands it. And then we tell everybody else, hey, get, check this out. Come run with this Jesus. He sent me here to run with him to tell you there's a place to run to. 
So you don't have to go to the drugs. You don't have to go to the popularity contest that this world says you need to be in. You don't have to have a thousand degrees behind your name to be special. You don't have to make tons of cash. You just have to realize that he is the one we run to. The Lord has given us a place to run to. And then we run with him back to the people who are running on that race that isn't going anywhere. We call it the rat race. When you're not going anywhere and all it becomes is frustrating and disappointing. Is this all that life is? No, there's more. And we are going to run anyway. So we might as well run with and for Jesus. Say amen. Amen. We're born to run, y'all. And we can run the race that's marked out for us that Jesus has run before us. My prayer is that this series brings you hope to understand that even though David was running for his life, he was running to the life giver. And when he did that, he left the recording here so we could pick up the notes, pick up the breadcrumbs and be encouraged that no matter what we go through, he is the one who knows that Jesus can help us no matter what. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for who you are, what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for the point you bring us in our walk with you. And God, we just thank you for the opportunity to lift up your name, to understand that you are here with us, that no matter what our challenges may be, you have still called us not to just run away from things, not to just run away from ourselves, not to run away from responsibilities. But if we run in, we might as well run to you because you can help us to settle in and process things. You can help us to forgive ourselves for the mistakes we made. You can help us to run with purpose because you ran with purpose before us and now you're passing the baton to us so that we may show others that there's a better way to run. Not the rat race of this world, but the kingdom race you've given us. And so Lord, thank you for this example from David to do that and Lord, help us to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue in worship. Let's all stand. Sing this next song. As I rise, strength of God. Go before, lift me up, and as I wake, eyes of God, look upon, be my side, As I go, hand of God, my defense by my side, as I rest, breath of God, fall upon, bring me peace, bring me peace above.
together your life your death your blood was shed for every moment every moment your life your death your blood was shed for every moment every moment your life your death your blood Before I get you the blessing, I just want to let you know I got some pamphlets and brochures over. If you want to know more about Reach Forgotten Jail Ministry, where the light of Christ is all around us in that jail, and God is moving in there powerfully. So if you want more information about that, you can pull me to the side, or you can actually have one of my pamphlets. But I'm here to give you the blessing. This is how it works. It comes from God through the preacher to you. It's spoken over your life so you can make a difference out there in the real world. It's a blessing and not a prayer. So every head up, every eye open, and every hand open, you receive it like this, like a gift, because that's what it is. Here it comes. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you, smile on you, and give you God's peace. Go forth in the knowledge that God the Father has loved you. Jesus Christ has redeemed you, and the Holy Spirit empowers you to run from, run to, and run with our God. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and love and serve. God bless you.